feels like there's a new AI story popping up every other day, and things have gotten so competitive that startups are basically scrambling to find ways to stand out. But before I dive into the details, let me set the stage for you. There's this crazy race among Chinese AI companies, and it's partly fueled by DeepSeek. They dropped a model earlier this year that they say runs way cheaper than some Western rivals, and it basically turned the Chinese AI market upside down. Companies are launching new AI products left and right. Government investors are pouring in cash and everyone wants to be the country's top AI champion. Jipu AI is one name that keeps coming up because it's been in the headlines a lot. They're not brand new to the scene. In fact, they spun out of a Tsinghua University lab back in 2019 and have put out several big deal models under the GLM series. Lately, they've been talking about how their newest large language model, GLM4, supposedly beats GPT-4 on a bunch of benchmarks. That's a huge claim and it's definitely got people's attention. Not only that, but they just rolled out a free AI agent called Auto GLM Rumination. Think of that as an all-purpose digital helper that can research, plan trips, search the web for you, write reports, and basically handle all sorts of tasks. The fact that it's free is a major selling point, especially when you compare it to competitor Manus, whose general AI agent costs users as much as 199 bucks a month. But why Jipu's decision to go free is so impactful? Well, the Chinese market for AI agents has become super cutthroat. For a while, a lot of folks were paying attention to a competitor called Manus, which charges a premium, and then there's also DeepSeek, with its cost-saving approach that's shaken up the playing field. Jipu's CEO Zhang Peng made it clear at a lunch event in Beijing that auto GLM rumination runs on their own homegrown models, including GLM Z1 Air, which they say matches DeepSeek star model R1 in performance, but runs eight times faster and requires far less in terms of computing resources. That's a pretty bold statement because resource consumption is a huge factor in running these large language models. On top of that, it seems Zipu has been getting financial backing from all sorts of local governments. The city of Chengdu just put in 300 million yuan, which is about $41.5 million, and that was their third round of government-backed funding in a single month, so Zipu's been on a roll. But it hasn't been all smooth sailing for Zipu. Earlier this year, the U.S. Department of Commerce put them on an export control entity list, effectively blocking them from buying U.S. components. That's a huge challenge for any AI company, especially since chips from companies like NVIDIA are considered the backbone of advanced AI training. Still, Zipu managed to rake in 500 million yuan from a state-owned conglomerate called Huafa Group. And before that, they announced 1 billion yuan fundraising round. The consensus seems to be that local governments throughout China view AI as a strategic sector, so they want to back the winners. Meanwhile, the entire Chinese AI ecosystem is shifting in response to DeepSeek's success. Several startups are rethinking their strategies, some are slashing marketing budgets, others are focusing on specific industries like healthcare, and a few are ditching training entirely to become service providers for third-party businesses. One example is 01.ai, run by Kai Fu Li, who used to head Google China. They stopped training their own large language models in late 2024 and, instead, decided to sell solutions that leverage DeepSeek's open source approach. Another startup, Baichuan, fired their sales team that was pitching financial AI apps to banks and is now all about healthcare AI. Then there's Moonshot, which got attention for a chatbot called Kimi but ran into reliability issues and is shifting back to model training, hoping to replicate DeepSeek's approach. The Chinese government basically crowned DeepSeek as the champion, so these smaller players are either pivoting or doubling down in hopes of staying alive. Zipu, on the other hand, hasn't backed down from doing it all. They've launched consumer apps, they sell enterprise solutions, and they're talking up an IPO on the Shanghai Stock Exchange's star market. Investors have been briefed on the company's finances. Apparently, they made around 300 million yuan in sales in 2024, but had losses of about 2 billion yuan, which is pretty significant. On top of that, Zipu has around 800 employees, which dwarfs DeepSeek's 160-person workforce. It's understandable that investors might be concerned about Zipu burning so much cash at a time when DeepSeek has proven you can operate on a leaner, cheaper model. Even so, 
Zaipu remains a serious player thanks to the government's backing and the fact that their new free AI agent is aimed at mass adoption. The question is whether their rumored IPO will still go through smoothly, given how dramatically the environment has changed since DeepSeek's big breakthrough. One angle is that local governments might favor DeepSeek for their official solutions, and that's precisely one of Zipu's big revenue streams, selling AI services to local governments. If the government is fully behind DeepSeek, what does that mean for Zipu's business model in the future? It's not just the Chinese companies that are making headlines. In the US, Apple is reportedly developing an AI tool that acts like a virtual doctor. They've labeled it Project Mulberry, which builds on something called Project Quartz, a health coaching service that uses AI to encourage better habits and track user data. Rumor has it Apple wants to release it along with a new iOS update, possibly 19.4, sometime in the spring or summer of 2025. The idea is to feed all the health data that iPhones and Apple Watches collect into an AI that can recommend personalized exercise routines, diets, and sleep schedules. Apple also plans to add food tracking, which they've avoided in the past, so they'd be directly competing with apps like MyFitnessPal and Noom. And they're even training an AI agent with the help of real doctors on staff. This is a big deal since Apple's been making moves in health tech for a while, but an AI doctor or AI health coach could push them further into the medical field. They just have to avoid the pitfalls of patent conflicts and make sure data privacy is rock solid. And speaking of big tech shakeups, we got news about Elon Musk selling X formerly known as Twitter, to his own AI company, XAI, in an all-stock deal worth about $52 billion. Musk originally bought Twitter for $44 billion in 2022, then rebranded it as X, cut a bunch of staff, and watched advertisers bail out. Now he's effectively merging X with XAI, which is known for building advanced AI systems like the Grok chatbot. The idea seems to be that by owning a social media platform with 600 million users, plus a cutting edge AI lab, you can integrate AI features directly into the social media experience. Musk's interest in AI has been pretty public and XAI itself has grown fast over just two years. It's all about synergy apparently, as he's described it. So we might see more AI driven content recommendations and moderation on X. He's also said it's an important step toward seeking truth and advancing knowledge, which may sound lofty, but it fits with his track record of chasing big, ambitious projects. The question now is how this will affect the user experience and whether XAI's advanced features like Grok3 will be folded into everyday interactions on X. People might get AI-assisted replies, better curation, or maybe even brand new subscription tiers that leverage the AI's capabilities. There's no telling how everything will shake out in another six months or a year, but the bottom line is that AI is the hot ticket right now. The technology is no longer just about fancy demos. It's about entire platforms, entire business models, and entire industries either being disrupted or reimagined. As AI keeps evolving, we might see more free AI agents, more government-backed mega fundings, more corporate realignments, and definitely more claims about whose model is the best and most cost efeeble. To keep up with all of this and make sure you're not missing out, we're launching a newsletter really soon. It's gonna be the best way to stay in the loop with everything happening in AI. Plus, we'll be announcing some free courses through the newsletter too. So if you're even a little bit interested in learning and staying ahead of the curve, it's definitely worth signing up. The link to join is down in the description, so check it out. All right, that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, Give it a like and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you in the next one.